Hello and welcome. We're going to be demonstrating Olive Tree's Bible Reader on the iPad. And this is going to be a whirlwind video uh, review of the software, the application. We're going to go really fast. So if I tap anywhere on a void area, I can turn on and off that uh, GUI that appears at the top. Let me turn it back on for you. Paging is done by swiping left and right. Olive Tree has two main windows. I've got a gesture attached that will pull up the secondary window. Here we have the ESV Study Bible, uh, Bible on the top and the ESV Study Bible Notes in the bottom. And I've got it synchronized such that when you update the location on the top, the notes will follow. I've also got it in a particular sub-mode of synchronization such that I can read behind or ahead and it won't update the top you can change which mode you want it in. Let's look at the library. If I open up the library, you see that I can switch what book is opened in the top. Now I've got the Holman Standard in the top. Um, I can look at either these filters recently opened or look at the stuff that's in favorites. If I want to, I can look at the full library by checking that button on the bottom. So there's my full library. There's um, two ways to view it. I can view it in the list mode or view it in the bookshelf mode. It will remember the last mode that it was in and allow you to change it. If we go to the store, I'll go to the store real fast. This is how you get content into your library. There's a lot of different ways to look at the store. I can look at stuff that I purchased or look at featured. I'm going to go into this browse which will pull up filters. Um, so I can look at just Bibles or study Bibles as a filter, free academic, just all types of stuff. Free is always a good filter to look through, and you'll see that Olive Tree offers a lot of free content. There's maps and all kinds of things. Uh, if you're interested in one of them, you can get a little synopsis before you decide to download it. If I hit that download, it'll, it'll, it'll be in my library. So here's John Piper's look at a lot of autobiographies of Bunyan and stuff. A lot of good stuff there. So let's close out of the out of the, out of the library. Uh, let me demonstrate how to change a uh, location. Uh, three taps in this grid mode, so we can go to uh, John, chapter three, and look at verse sixteen. So there we are. And if I want to, I can hit the history and uh, go right back. I can keep going back to places I've been to before or go forward um, and I can do that in the split window as well. I can even open up the entire history and I can order that by date or or by a book. So let me close that down. There's a lot of, lot of things to do. Probably the biggest enhancement for version 5 was the resource guide and let me tell you a little bit about what that's doing if you don't already know the resource guide is taking a look at the scripture that's actively viewed in the top and going to all those books that I had in my library and populating hits according to different categories so um, right now I don't have introductions on so let me just and I did that purposely just to show you that the resource guide is highly configurable. So there's a section called introductions and I will turn that on. Not only will I turn that on, but I'll turn Calvin content off and video content off so that I'll only get introduction material from the ESV and the HCSB. Uh, so now when I click out of there, uh, well, I guess the introductions is down at the bottom there. So it's highly configurable. Here's uh, topics, maps, Bibles, commentaries. And let's just go dig into some commentaries. Uh, we'll go into the ESV Study Bible commentary. And so I get a little overview, uh, just a little teaser about where that commentary is. And then I dig down into there. I'm, open, I'm opened at that location and I can scroll if I want to hit a reference and we can open up that reference and read that scripture in a fully functional window here. As a matter of fact, um, that same pop-up window, 
me go back to my recently opened and go back to study Bible notes. This is a more typical view. Close this window down a little bit to show you can change the size of the windows. So if I come to and hit one of these uh, publishers resources, uh, references, I'm sorry, um, I can open up that scripture right there. And this window is so functional that I can even hit a, re hit a, hit a reference here and open that one up as well. And I can go right back with my back button at the top. If I really get interested in something that I'm reading out of here, I can hit this little icon and choose to throw the contents in either the upper window or throw the contents in the lower window. I'll go ahead and throw that content in the lower window just to just to do that. So in my stuff over here, uh, you've got annotations and you can look at them all mixed together or you can look at them by type. There's notes, highlights, and bookmarks. There's more stuff in my stuff, but I just wanted to talk about the annotations a little bit. Let me go to highlights. Uh, I think you've let's look at anything that I've highlighted yellow. So let me go back just a little bit. So you can name your highlights. That's really nice. You can configure them, change the color, the amount of transparency. You can do all of that. Um, so you could have a highlight that's called Deity of Christ and just highlight scriptures that are in there and categorize things that way. Um, but anyway, everything that I've highlighted that was yellow, let me just go to uh, Matthew 3.17 in the ESV. So there's my um, highlight right there. I'm going to do a selection. I'll select uh, Wilderness right here. So you get the little handles and you can drag your selection uh, to uh, become bigger or smaller. And once you have something selected, you can copy it or you can highlight it, which is the way I did this portion of the scripture above. You can create a note beside it. You can create a bookmark and save that bookmark into folders. So you can create a, a, a well, I, I created a folder called ESV Maps. And then I took the time and went through each of my maps and did a bookmark beside each of one each one of those. Um, and I'll show that to you a little bit later on. I thought that was a pretty handy trick. But I can do more and then uh, do a search for wilderness. And so there you see we have searched for wilderness. I'll close that out and then reopen the search up. It will remember the last thing that you've searched for, even if you've closed the software down. There's lots of nice search uh, search uh, features. Um, Auto Tree also has gestures. I've got a double tap that will change what is opened in the split window so I can cycle through the resource guide or look at my notes. And here I'll just open this note. I can expand that note to full page or shrink it back down to the lower window. Continuing my double tap, I can go all the way back into what was opened before. So, before resource guide notes. Um, really, really nice software. This was a whirlwind look at it. Uh, we went through it very quickly. I didn't even get a chance to talk about settings or advanced settings. So, lots of stuff. Just check it out. Thanks for joining.